welcome to Next Games Odyssey series. This video covering an introduction to the Shield Jail Atonement 3 NMs and Zivioso. Now in this introductory video, I will give a brief intro to Atonement 3 NMs, then I'll go into the Zivioso battle strategy that I used, and then I'll show you two different battle examples of my fight against him, one where I take him to 44% hit points, and the other one 28%. I definitely feel he is soloable, I just gotta get my strategy down. Now, Atonement 3 has been released and is without a doubt offering the biggest challenge to date in Odyssey, and it's bringing everything we have been working on since Odyssey's release to conclusion with six Delve Boss NMs that they have released. Now, once defeated, these NMs offer the purchase of lots of new gear for four to six million gil each. Now, this gear can be further augmented by beating that same NM on higher Vengeance levels. There is way too much gear to list in a single video, so I'm going to go ahead and put a link to the top pinned comment so that people can go take a look on the BG Wiki site and see exactly all these new options that it provides you. Each NM locks a specific set of weapons and gear. Now the first NM I'm going to attempt to take on is Zivioso, as he unlocks the new katana, and the second NM I'll be attempting to take on is Arabati, as he unlocks the new ninja gear. I'll then go ahead and deal with the remaining four NMs after I have those two out of the way. Now, these Atonement 3 NMs each have a specific weakness, and it's really only in that one form of damage that you'll be able to succeed in the fight. If you try and do any of the other forms of damage, it will do practically no damage, and you're almost certainly going to run out of time without defeating the NM. Now, the reports are still coming in in regards to which weakness is for which NM, but most of them are figured out at this point. For Zephioso, it's Piercing. For Arabati, it's Piercing. For Nagai, it's Blunt. For Kalunga, it's Slashing. Now, Ongo has two reports coming in, either Blunt or Magic. And likewise, Embu's is either Slashing or Magic. So, if you're going to try either of those two NMs, you're going to have to try both of those damage forms to see which one's going to work best for you. Because at this point, I do not have a definitive answer. Now, these NMs will use the normal abilities that you have seen, that NMs use, in addition to a specific element spells that have been assigned to that NM. They also have a mechanic, where under certain conditions, you're going to see a red proke above the NM, and then a fetter will spawn that will have a nasty aura on it that usually inflicts a status ailment and has near 500 hit points down per tick for anyone in range. So this is devastating for your trust. Now it's been noticed that as long as you keep dealing damage, these fetters will despawn, but another way to deal with them is to simply relocate more than 25 feet away. Use a strategy that works best for you and your setup I tried both of these strategies in my video, and truthfully, I think staying put and continuing to fight is probably going to be the best bet based on what I've seen thus far. Now let's go ahead and talk about the first NM that I decided to take on, Zivioso. Now I have to be honest, and I never did the Delve content. That was during my small break from the game for a few years. Um, so it's enjoyable to actually now get to take on these NMs in this endgame content. However, they do pose quite a challenge. This first one, Zivioso, his main attacks on the tank will be in two forms. It's either going to be a single target attack that hits for upwards of 500 damage, or it's going to be an AoE attack that will completely ignore the shadows of everyone in range and hit everyone for around 200 damage. Now, the spells seen used were Arrow 5, which hits for about 500 damage, Eraga 4, which hits everyone in range for about 500 damage, and Silenga which is very annoying since we don't have access to Yoran, who would often resist this and quickly get it off everyone else. So all we can do is rely upon Monboro to get it off everyone as quickly as he can. Now the abilities that were seen here were Mandibular Lashing, and this appears to be a conal attack now as opposed to a single target attack, and it will wipe your shadows. It hits for only around few hundred damage, thankfully. Incisive Devoutment is a critical damage type ability with Enmity Reset. Now at first, I thought this was a throat stab type ability as it always left RKV at near zero hit points. However, it did end up doing over 4,000 damage to him in the second example and killed him. So this is definitely not a throat stab type ability and it can do large amounts of damage. So this is the largest risk to your tank in this fight. The next ability is Stinger Volley, which is simply a conal damage and paralyze ability. The next one is Vespin Hurricane. Now, this is supposed to be AoE damage, but it looked to be Conal in my fight example, and it usually only hit RKV for about 500 damage. It does inflict defense down and magic defense down. However, once this ability hit me, 
This did 1,800 damage both times it hit me. So it definitely is a significant risk to you and actually ends my run in the second battle example. The next ability is Droning Whirlwind. Now this is an AoE damage ability for up to 1,000 damage to everyone in range and dispel. So it's the most dangerous ability to your entire party. It's also the most dangerous as I have noticed the proc normally happens directly after this ability. So anytime you see it go off, be ready to see the red exclamation points and try and get more damage in to make sure that that fetter he possibly spawns despawns as quickly as possible. Now for Trust and Shield Gaul, I suggest you use Archie to tank and then use August and Amchu to back her up if killed, Arcelia for haste, and then use Koru or King of Hearts to back her up if killed, Joachim for march, then summoning Omia and Sethtas back if he is killed, and then we're using Monboro and Kupipi for cures, and if either of them die, you want to summon Cherukiki or Yignus. Now the last thing I want to bring up in this video that I've been remiss to do thus far is the lag in Sheol Jail. I've been fortunate not to be overly affected by it until these runs, but it's clear from hearing the complaints of so many on these forums that it's near unplayable for so many. Hopefully SE fixes this issue soon. In both of my runs, they start out entirely lag free, but then around 50% hit points I start getting 3 second delays or so in my command usage. Now this is something that I can normally just work around, but what I noticed when watching the videos back is it also really messes with my gear swaps. I thought the bee was putting up some kind of evasion boost when the fetters dropped, and in the middle of it all, that's what made sense to me. But upon watching it back, you can see in my gear in the lower right hand corner that I'm often left in either my fast cast gear or weapon skill gear set, which leaves me with poor accuracy. This leads to more fetters being dropped, which leads to my eventual losses in both runs. Now to combat this, I'm going to go old school and designate a macro for my TP gear set so that I can just hit it at any time and force myself back into my TP gear set. Hopefully that allows me to get past this and finally win this run on my third attempt. Okay, here are going to be my two battle examples. Enjoy the runs everyone.
That'll be it for the Atonement 3 Shield Jail introductory video. I hope you found some of that informative and helpful. And hopefully, next time you see me in this Odyssey series, you'll see me defeating Zvioso. I get about two NM attempts per week, so I'll continue to report on my progress as we go through this Atonement 3 process. Thanks so much for watching, everyone. Stay safe and stay healthy out there.